Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 63 in the FreeCAD series. Today we're going to experiment a little bit with the Assembly 3 workbench. This user on the help board at FreeCADweb.org has a question about aligning these cubes. These are four cubes in this object getting them aligned such that when he fuses them he doesn't want these extra edges still showing up and they're still showing up even with refine equals true and that's because they're just not lined up exactly right he did it with the draft workbench movement and snap tools and it's just not he just didn't get them exactly right. So he uploaded his model and we'll use that that model that he uploaded and try to get it corrected. So I'm using virtual box, Oracle virtual box, which I believe to be free open source software. I know it's free. I'm pretty sure it's open source. Not entirely sure on that but if you just do a google search for um, oracle virtual box you'll find it or whatever search engine you prefer and i'm running ubuntu virtual machine inside of it so i've got windows 10 running virtual box and inside virtual box an ubuntu virtual machine <clears throat> I believe it's been a while since I put this together but I believe I got the virtual machine from osboxes.org they've got pre-configured virtual machines you can download there free of charge and they've got them made for virtual box some are made for VMware which is commercial software it's not free there is a VMware player that is free, but I recommend going with VirtualBox. But you could get the virtual machine for VMware or VirtualBox. So make sure you get the right one for whichever uh, virtual uh, software you're using. So that's how I got um, Ubuntu virtual machine running, I believe. I might have created it from scratch. I don't remember but I do know that I updated within the virtual machine I did a software up upgrade to the latest uh, Ubuntu release I've done that at least once and then installed uh, FreeCAD actually I downloaded the app image file and with the app image file that's the one that has assembly 3 you don't get assembly 3 with the windows or mac builds you have to get the app image for linux as of right now that could change in the future so anyway did i show you which version yet this is 0 0.19.203.10 on Ubuntu 18.04.4 FTS. So uh, FreeCAD thinks it's running in Linux, even though it's really running in a virtual machine. This is the user's file. So you can see it's four cube objects. Now one thing I did notice when looking through these is I'm not sure why I'm getting this box here. Let me exit and restart it. So the app image file, you download it, mark it executable, and run it. You don't have to extract it or install it. I'm just restarting it because 
I was getting this crazy looking um, artifact there. I don't know why. Still there. Must be some setting somewhere. It's showing the, the bounding box. And I don't know why. Anyway, one thing I noticed looking at these this height is 9.99. Everything else is an integer value, but not this one. So I'm going to set that to 10, assuming that's some sort of an error. And then we'll try to get them aligned. So I'm going to go to uh, Assembly 3 Workbench. Go through the menu, create an assembly. Now, this requires each object that you're manipulating be inside of a part container. So I'm going to create four part containers, one for each cube. Drop one into each part. And hopefully, let's expand these to make sure. I got one in each and not two in one. And none in another. So select uh, all four of these parts, drag them into the assembly. Now, when you expand the assembly, you see you have elements, parts, and if you expand parts, you see all the objects. That's the hierarchy you need. When we start adding constraints, it will create a constraints uh, group as well. So the assembler uses constraints, similar in many ways to the constraints that you've already seen in the Sketcher workbench. In the Sketcher, for example, you could constrain a point on an edge, and you can do two points constrained together, or two edges constrained to be parallel, etc. Now in here, I want to constrain this edge of this box to be aligned with this edge of, of this box. So if we zoom in closely and keep zooming in, we can see that two, these two edges are not exactly um, lined up. Let's see if I can get it to pre-select that other edge there. Let me switch to wireframe mode. Got them both selected. And then I'm going to use this add axial alignment. So the tooltip says add a axial alignment constraint to align edges or faces of two or more parts. Constraint accepts linear edges, which become collinear, and planar faces, which are aligned using their surface normal axis. Cylindrical face. Different types of elements can be mixed. So here we have two edges that we're going to align to be collinear. And let's see if we can get these two on this side similarly aligned. Zoom in a little bit at a time until you can see that separation. And hover around until you get them pre-selected. Select them, apply the axial and now let's see if we can solve. So notice now we have a constraints group with our two constraints inside. So 
So I'd also like to align these two edges if I can get them to separate. And solve. You got two options, solve and quick solve. Not sure what the difference is. One of them maybe is quicker. The other more robust, I don't know. So these are the, the three alignments that we have so far. Let me see if it will let me allow these, uh, align these two as well. It's telling me redundant constraint. I'm going to live on the edge and just let it go. In the sketcher, you don't want redundant constraints, but this is not the sketcher. Let's go back to normal mode now. As is mode. Let me see if I can align this now. Alright, if we zoom in closely. Yeah, you see how this point is above this plane. So I'm going to select the point in the plane. And this time, I'm going to apply this constraint. Add a point in plane to constrain one or more point inside a plane. I don't think English is the first language of the person who wrote that. Let's apply, uh, solve these. English is my only language, so I've got no room to talk. Yeah, let's do this point on this plane. Lots of options point on line, point on circle, point to point distance, uh, coincident between two points. So we want point on plane here solve it and I think we might just have it perfectly aligned now so what I'm going to do is hide the assembly switch over to part workbench expand these parts select each part not the, I want you to notice something here. You see how these were adjusted, the placement? This is in nanometers, so very tiny adjustments have been made to each of these parts, not this one evidently. That one must be that main bar. Let's see. So this one was left in alignment and the other the other parts were adjusted to fit that one. So each nanometer adjustment. So the cubes themselves were not moved by the assembler. It was the part containers that have been adjusted. And these are the ones that we want to fuse together in the part workbench. I'm going to hide the assembly. So now the, the fusion is what's available, what's showing, you see. Now we still have these extra edges, but we haven't applied the fine equals true yet. So I'm happy with that result. 
I did get this error here, exception group is not part of the enumeration. We don't know what's going on with that. If we select parts here and try to fuse that, we get exception. If we select the assembly and try to fuse that, we get exceptions. Not enough memory available. Still some bugs to work out. And I don't have much experience with this workbench either with, uh, with assembly. So through experimentation, I have found that fusing the parts is, seems to be the best way to go if you want if you want a fusion object that you can refine and get rid of those extra edges. So assembly three, it looks like a really interesting workbench with a lot of promise. I think there are still some uh, some bugs that need to be worked out, no doubt. As more people begin using it and submitting bug reports, that'll be fixed. Hopefully we can get this workbench into the FreeCAD main as one of the uh, built-in workbenches. I'm hoping when 0.19 is released as a stable version that it will have this workbench in it or at the very least be able to go to the add-on manager and um, install it from there because it's one of the one of the big knocks on FreeCAD to this point has been the lack of a really good assembler and this assembly three looks like to me the best candidate for that. We've added it to the app image. If that can be done, I see no reason we could not also add it to the Windows and Linux, uh, Macintosh builds. My two cents on that issue. So uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.